Hello, this is Duncan Paul and we're using uh, Flexium 2020 today and we're going to be doing tutorial booklet 5, Intermediate, uh, where we're going to be looking at conveyors and product carriers. Um, so just scrolling down to the model, I'll have to scroll a bit further down so we can see a little bit more. Uh, you can see uh, we're going to be cr creating a, a lot of conveyors and we're going to go from a source to a conveyor to a combiner, to a second conveyor with a curve on it, processor separator, and uh, another return. Uh, what well, basically this is going to be a return conveyor system for uh, the second, well actually the first source for the combiner because that's going to be the pallet. So we're going to generate a, a finite number of pallets to see how many pallets we need to keep this system running. Uh, and then what's going to happen, uh, the boxes will go on, the pallets will turn back round, they'll be processed, uh, sorry, tested, and a percentage will go around the good conveyor, and then uh, the, a, sm a smaller percentage will go down the bad conveyor. Okay, um, right, so it's quite a uh, big model, so let's go over to Flexim. Okay, we're in Flexim, and uh, I uh, set it to minutes. Uh, I've obviously started the uh, the tutorial. Um, if you can see, there's a source, uh, quite a number of uh, conveyors, actually two sources, uh, combiner, two processors, separator. Um, let's just make sure that I have set uh, the uh, conveyors up to uh, 0.2 I change it to meters per second and I want it to be 0.2 and apply and what we should find is uh, that is applied to all conveyors so just click, click on a random one I'm just make sure it's dropped down to yes to, to 0.2 Right, so I'm going to click on this uh, source here, and I'm going to call it carrier, carriers, and apply, and OK, and I'm going to connect that to the uh, first curve conveyor. So this is going to create the pallets, and what we know about combiners is the first connection to a combiner should be the pallet or the, the sort of car chassis or whatever so I need to make sure I connect this to the combiner first and now we can carry on and start with this source up here to the conveyor, conveyor to combiner and then the combined pieces will go onto the conveyor go here to this processor, did that connect? I don't think it did, do it again yeah, and I'd, I'm going to connect the sep uh, the separator first to this uh, uh, conveyor, and then to the smaller conveyor, small conveyor to the separator, and then the separators to these two conveyors, and then finally to the sinks. Uh, let's reset and run just to see if anything is uh, not connected and stuff uh, to shout out at us. If anything happens, seems to be. It looks looks a bit strange there. That's because I've got boxes instead of pallets and stuff. So we can sort that out later on. Okay, so uh, let's open this the carrier's source. And we're going to do uh, something different today instead of uh, an arrival style as into arrival time we're going to do an arrival schedule and we're going to set the quantity to five and um, we're not going to repeat so and then we, we want to give it uh, let's call that item type and we'll give it to number one there 
uh, this might look slightly differently on uh, different versions of uh, Flexim. But the main thing is that we're creating a quantity of five at the beginning of the shift and no more. That's it. And we've seen if we can uh, create this production line with only five carriers. Imagine these carriers are really expensive. We want to optimize the number we have to order before we start production. Okay. Um, apply it and okay. Let's go to the, the source of the boxes now. Actually, I'm just going to go back there to the pallets. I'm not sure I could change the... No, I didn't. Let's change the, the carrier to, uh, flow items to pallets. Go to the source. And, uh, uh, and we want to have uh, an inter-arrival time of uh, statistical distribution uh, normal. 140 by 15, and we'll leave that the same. And apply and OK. And let's go to the compiler and sort out its process time. And it's currently set at 10, and we want it to be 30. And let's go to the combiner tab. And uh, as we know, it's port two, which is coming from uh, source one down the conveyor. And, and just make sure that the uh, things are working out okay now. So we hopefully we'll get a five pallets, which we have done. We've got a pallet coming on here. It's waiting for a box to come along here. And we're getting one box. And it looks as though things are reasonably working okay. Let's open up the first processor. and change the uh, process time to statistical distribution normal. Uh, so it's statistical distribution normal. And it's going to be uh, 135 and standard deviation of 5. And apply and OK. And let's go to the uh, uh, separator now. And the process time to separate is going to take 30. And it looks as though the default setting for the, the separator is, is working OK because it's the pallets that are coming back around here. So hopefully when this box comes, it comes along here and the pallets come there and the boxes go down there. So we've got one coming down here. So it's, yeah, so the boxes okay so if we if we actually look at this and go to floor uh, the, this this is working fine um, because we, we put the output ports as uh, remember the conveyors Let's zoom up if we can uh, taking these little box names so that is uh, entry transport one and that is Entry transport for so it'll be sending one off there um, to port one and then the port two. Now let's open up the uh, properties window for this. The final processor it's a, a testing station, so let's give it a name tester. And the process time is 10 uh, minutes. And And let's go to floor and change it to uh, um, by percentage. And we know that 36% should go down port 1 and 64%. Make sure this adds up to 100. Uh, it goes to port 2. Uh, so we know that uh, Port one is the, where, where the failures go. Uh, so let's just check where we're sending to output port one to is the five. So let's just scroll up. Let's, which one's that? That's six. So that's the good ones. So five is the uh, scrap ones. And so let's change 
the colour of the parts that are going on here. So uh, on entry, let's uh, these are scraps. So let's change them to red. There, there we go, and apply. And let's do a similar thing on here. These are uh, good ones. So if we change these to green, we've got a visual representation of the scraps, etc. So let's change that to green and apply and OK. And let's zoom out. Reset and run. So it's coming down, it's separating fine, uh, it's running a little bit fast, so let's just crank it down a bit. So it's gone red, etc. So it, and it looks like we've got um, quite a number of pallets there. Uh, uh, we don't seem to be waiting for pallets, so you could argue that uh, Buying five pallets is a bit much. Let's change this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to create a um, the second source. So I'm going to do the edit copy, copy, paste, uh, copy, paste. So I've got another source for my combiner. And I'm going to change these into um, boxes. I'm going to change them into spheres. And what we've been asked to do is to create a combina combiner. And there should be one box and two spheres placed onto the palette. So um, the combiner tab should have been updated now, uh, which it has done. So we know that this is number three coming from this source here. And it says it wants um, two spheres. So let's go on there. And click on apply and OK. So let's reset and run. Might be a little bit slower now because it's going to wait, have to wait for two spheres to come along. So it's creating the palette. And ticking away. There's one box, there's a sphere. One thing we're not seeing, it's kind of nice to see, is um, along the combiner, is it uh, the palette sort of sliding along? Uh, reset, run. Because um, it's waiting for the second sphere, this is te taking quite a long time. Um, so you can see it's gone, it's coming along. Just make sure that uh, all the right things are going. So, so the boxes and spheres are coming down here, and the pallet's going back around here, and it still looks as though we're more than comfy with five. So what we could do is, um, in the scenario, we could uh, quickly go to the, the carrier and change uh, that to maybe three. We'll see how tight that goes. Running again. So there's two in place and there's one waiting. So that seem, seems to be the optimum. Actually, you could probably go down to two, but it's quite risky. And you'd be, uh, you know, if something happened, you'd be, yeah, or the one was damaged, you'd be, you'd be struggling. So three, maybe, uh, maybe two. You can see what's happening as well. These boxes are starting to appear because uh, we, we're having to do um, wait for the second s sphere. There we can, uh, so we could even slow these uh, being down, or we need to increase uh, the speed of this. So um, say we were able to increase the speed of this uh, from 140. Um, to twice as much to 70 
Let's just apply that and say OK. Stop reset run. So we should get um, the ball should be coming at uh, first. There you go. So it's, it's no oh, getting and that is that is getting very tight. Um, look at one ball. Yeah. That's very tight. But by increasing the um, the speed of the uh, the source where the spheres are coming from, um, we we're very close. I mean, the idle time on the combine is very little, and that's 0.2 is probably coming from the fact that they're just start of the day, and it's having to wait for the first pallet and the first um, uh, box and spheres. Okay, um, that is the end of the tutorial. I hope it's been useful for you guys. Thanks a lot.